Hey, it's Jared. Welcome to another Elementor tutorial. Today we're going to build out a footer for our website. In another video, we built a header that you can see here on our very basic website, and uh, we're going to build out a footer. Now, using Elementor Pro, this is pretty easy because there are uh, pre-built designed templates that you can just apply, which is fantastic, but we're going to learn how to build one from scratch. Now, I also have a free course available if you want to go through and learn everything that there is to know about Elementor. I've got a link in the description below. It's a free course. You can sign up and take it today and learn all of this stuff. Uh, or you can watch some of my different videos here on this YouTube channel. So make sure to click subscribe so you get notified when new video tutorials come out. So uh, you can see we've got our basic page here with a header and nothing else. Uh, and when I talked about the header and building the header, I mentioned that I like to build out the header and even the footer before building the interior pages of the website. Uh, starting with the header and footer, it gives me um, a container in which I can work from. And building out the pages, I want to make sure that those pages look and feel good with the header and the footer that I'm going to be using. So I think it's important to build the header and the footer first. So let's go into our WordPress dashboard and under templates, we're going to go to theme builder and under footer, we'll just click on footer and choose create first footer because we haven't created a footer yet. And I'm going to call this default footer. Now you can create multiple footers and have different footers show up in different areas of your website. Uh, one of the last things that we're going to do in this tutorial is publish our footer and it will give us the ability to choose where we want that footer to show up, whether it be the entire site or only on specific pages. So let's click on create template. And here is where we get all of our nice pre-designed uh, templates that we can use. And it's very easy. Just click insert and you'll get one of those. Um, some of these are pretty intense. They have a lot to them. And then some of them are pretty simple. So this is a great way to get started, but we're going to click on X and we're going to build out our own footer. So you can click on plus and create a full width or a 50-50 or a three part. There's lots of different sections uh, that you can use here to build out your footer. Now I'm going to, for this tutorial, use the like one third, two thirds split. And uh, so that way I could put my logo at the bottom and then I could put some other information over on the right hand side. You can build out your footer however you'd like. You can even start with the full width and add columns as you need them. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this one third, two third. We're going to drop in a site logo here, which is uh, the logo for our website. Um, if you don't have your logo uploaded or if you drag uh, site logo in and nothing shows up, you're going to need to go into the customizer. So we'll go into WordPress customizer. We'll click on site settings, logo and title, and we'll upload our logo. Uh, this section can look a little bit different based on the theme that you're using, but most themes have site settings and the area that you can upload your logo from there. So this site logo widget or element is an Elementor Pro widget. Uh, if you don't have access to this, you can use just the image uh, element, which is right here. There'll just be slightly different customization. So I don't want this to be such a large uh, image, so I'm going to go down to the medium size, which is actually a whole different image. When you upload an image to WordPress, it actually gives you different versions of that image in different sizes. So if you upload a pretty high resolution image, it's going to go ahead and create smaller resolution versions for you, which is good because they're going to be smaller file sizes and the page is going to load a lot faster with those smaller file sizes. So let's click on that logo. I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave it at that 300. Um, I want to make it smaller because it is a little bit big. So we're going to change the width and maybe make the width like I don't know, 40%. You can see here that uh, the link is automatically set to site URL. Just like I talked about when I built out the header, usually when somebody clicks on your logo, they want to go back to the home page. So we're just going to leave that. I'm going to leave this centered for right now until I see how our uh, section over here starts to look um, when we add in something over here. I may uh, want to add in a nav menu if you want to add navigation to the bottom. I may want to add in something like a search form or, or even an intersection. 
So by adding an intersection, it's going to give me columns within this, uh, this section here, which I think is a, a good way to maintain side by side when you are going into different size screens. So as your website goes through different computers, whether it be a small MacBook Pro like this or a bigger display or a smartphone, the way that you set up your columns and everything is, is going to matter and you can view how those things are going to look when you go into responsive mode and click between these different sections. So you can see here when I'm in mobile size responsive mode, it stacks them as opposed to having them side by side. So I don't necessarily want these pressed all the way against the top, so I'm going to go to this section and set vertical align to middle. And now you can see these are in the middle, which is great. I'll go and grab a nav menu and we'll throw maybe a, uh, well, let's throw the, yeah, let's throw the nav menu right here. I don't like the way that this looks, obviously, um, and I don't necessarily want it to go horizontal, so we'll switch it to vertical. That's a little too large still, so we're going to change the font size here to, let's try 20. So I don't really like the amount of spacing that's between that. We're going to need to adjust the line height as well. So let's go and set our line height. Um, 0.1 might be a little tight, so if we go to 0.2, I think that's looking fine. Um, it's lowercase. Our menu up top was all uppercase, but I think that it's fine for down here. Now I might want to add a section over on the right hand side that has contact information. So I can add a heading and we'll just put contact us, change the size there because that's obviously quite large. And then we'll add a text editor box. And now we have kind of a three section footer built, but nothing really feels like it's in any particular place. It's just kind of all over. I don't like the logo being centered when everything else is left justified. So now is where I might decide to left justify that section. I also don't like the fact that there isn't gonna be any separation between the footer and the top of the website. So just like I did when I created the header, I might add a border. And so we're gonna go with the section selected, the whole section. We're gonna to go to border. We'll choose solid. I'll unlink the values because I don't want a border going all the way around. And I'll set a two pixel border on the top. And so now it's very hard to see, but there is a two pixel border on the top. These sections still don't seem to live anywhere uh, or feel very cohesive. So um, the logo over here um, on a white background, we could even change this whole right hand section to a different color. So let's select this column and choose style, background color. We will set to something like a uh, light gray. And then that gives us a little bit of separation between our logo over here and this background color. Now that we have this set up this way, we could go back and center the logo and uh, it still looks a little bit off just because this whole background isn't full width. So we might actually want to go now and change this from boxed to full width so that we have the logo centered in this section and then we have this area looking pretty good there. So that's looking better. I do like that a lot better than what it was before. Um, this obviously is pretty simple. There's not a ton in this footer. If we wanted to add something like a copyright message or something to the bottom, we can add another full width section down below and drop in a text editor. And then we can put copyright 2021 or whatever and then we would want to center that text perhaps, um, and then that's going to show up. We might want to add a bottom line to separate things a little bit here. Um, we did, of course, add a top line using the border, so it's not too hard to go ahead and also add a two pixel bottom border as well. And if we really wanted to make this uh, bottom section um, 
maybe act even as a border in and of itself, rather than adding a bottom border, we could have made a background color for this whole section. So let's go and make this even a little bit darker. We'll go ahead and remove that bottom border. So now we just have a color change here and that's looking decent, pretty basic, but decent. Now that I'm done, I can hit publish. I can hit add condition and apply that to my entire site. And now I can go and refresh my site and I have a header and I have a footer section with a navigation, with my logo that's clickable and my contact information down there. And so that's how you build out a footer for Elementor. Now, there are some elements that I used that are only Elementor Pro. As I mentioned, instead of using site logo element, you would just use the image element instead and customize it appropriately. And instead of using the nav menu uh, element from Elementor, you would scroll down to the bottom and under WordPress, you would scroll down and use the navigation menu widget which is not very customizable. You're not gonna be able to stack your menu like this, but you can have your menu in there and that's going to work. And then of course, this element over here on the right does not require Element Pro to do a header and a text box. So you can accomplish pretty close to the same exact look without having Elementor Pro. So that's gonna do it for this tutorial. Thanks for checking it out. If you want access to more tutorials, make sure to subscribe to the channel here so that you don't miss out and check out the different playlists that we have on this channel so that you can uh, get to know Elementor better. Don't forget that I offered that free Elementor course. The link is down in the description below. And if you don't yet have Elementor or any other Elementor components, you can utilize some of the links that are in the description to check those out. Thanks so much for watching this video and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.